In this presentation, we'll look at creating an example dashboard for your ICA reports. A dashboard can help show your construct data in an intuitive and visual manner. I'll create this dashboard step by step, highlighting some of the most commonly used Excel tools. The main areas covered will be starting a dashboard and adding data charts, using multiple pivot tables for our raw data, adding a report index to quickly navigate the report, filtering the report with slices and timelines, how to add a calculated field, linking cells back to pivot tables, and how to use conditional formatting. We'll begin by opening a blank ICA report. In this example, we'll use ICA Professional Contract with Real Dates. Enter an ICA user's details. And here we have a blank pivot table to work with. We'll add some fields, starting off with the date transaction month, the forecasted costs, and the actual costs. This gives us some raw data to work with. We can rename the column headers. We could select the columns, format the cells, and set them to appear as currency. If we right click in the pivot table, we can go to pivot table options. We can give the pivot table a name, which will be useful for something we're going to do later. And we can deselect the auto fit column widths. That means when we refresh the data, our columns will not change size. And we can give the worksheet a name. One of the most common first things we might want to do is select our pivot table data, insert, and insert a chart. We can move this chart onto our dashboard sheet by cutting it, create a new worksheet, which again we'll name, and we can move this worksheet to be the first one in our sequence and paste the chart into this new worksheet. We can resize it we can right click and hide all field buttons set our colors and give the chart a title. We can also right click the chart, select format chart, and we can go to properties and set don't move when we resize cells. So this just means we can resize the columns without effect in our chart position. ICA reports are not limited to just using one pivot table, so let's add some more. We'll create a new worksheet for some cost data. The easiest way to get a pivot table is to copy the one that we already have, paste it into our new sheet,
and we can remove the fields that we don't want. And add the data we're interested in. We'll do the contract with the estimated costs and the actual costs. Again, rename in the column headers. Set in as currency. Pivot table options. And once again, giving the pivot table a name and the auto fit column is already deselected. And we'll create one more pivot table here. Again, taking a copy of an existing one. Removing the field that we're not interested in. But this time we'll have actual costs with actual sales. And a profit. Repeating some of the same steps. And this will give us three pivot tables that we can use to report on in our dashboard. So as before, now that we have our raw pivot table data, we can convert that to a more visual element to show on our dashboard. Again, we'll insert a chart, cut it and paste it onto the dashboard sheet. Hiding the field buttons and we can adjust the colours and add a title as required. We're using bar charts here because they're the most appropriate to show our data. Any of the charts available in Excel can be used. And we'll repeat the process for our other set of data. So when the background data on the pivot tables refreshes, our charts will automatically update with that information. And just repeating the steps to make sure our charts don't resize if the column widths do. What we can also do if we've got multiple charts is highlight them both, select shape format, and set the width and height for both of them at the same time. That just means that everything gets resized nicely. Please note that when adding additional pivot tables, it's important to position them so they don't overwrite each other. For example, if we would add this one below and then add additional rows, we're unable to do so. The top pivot table would have tried to overwrite the bottom one. Similarly, if we positioned it close enough to the side and then tried to add additional columns, we're prevented from doing so. Something else that can be very useful, especially if we've got a lot of worksheets on our report, is to create an index. That'll just give us a quick way 
of switching between our worksheets. So here I'm just entering some text for our index, a title, and the name of each sheet that we're going to apply a link to. And just doing a quick bit of formatting on the cells, merging them and getting the alignment right, just to make it look a bit tidier. So we can select the cell, right click and go to link, select place in this document and set the worksheet that we want to link to. Repeat for the other sheet. And now we have working links to switch to our other worksheets. But one thing we might want to do is just give us a way of getting back to the dashboard quickly. So if we insert a row and repeat the process, this time linking back to the dashboard sheet. And the more worksheets you have in your report, the more beneficial this will be. See so if we notice that the hyperlinks are changing colours once they've been selected. We can stop that happening by going to Page Layout Colours, Custom Colours. And we can just copy the hex code for the hyperlink colour and apply that same hex code to the followed hyperlink. That just means that they're going to retain the same colour blue when we click on them. So now that we have some data we might want to start thinking of a way of filtering this. For example, we could filter on the contract by right-clicking and add a slicer. We can make a copy of this slicer, paste it onto our dashboard, at the moment the slicer is only impacting one of our graphs. That's because it's only linked to one pivot table, but we can right click and go to report connections and select all of the pivot tables we want it to affect. Everything's getting updated now. We can right click and go to size and properties. Again, don't resize with cells and under position and layout, stop it from resizing and moving at all. You can also apply colours under the slicer tab at the top. And let's add another one. Again right clicking on the field and add a slicer. Take a copy. Drop it onto the dashboard. Make sure that it's linked to all of the pivot tables. And prevent it from resizing. Something else that we can do with slices if we need to. So in our slicer tab there, we can change the number of columns. Something else we can do to filter is use a timeline. This is particularly important if we want to filter on dates. So if we go to one of our pivot tables, right click on date transaction and add as timeline. And again, we can copy this, paste it onto our dashboard. And 
This will give us a very quick and visual way of limiting the transactions we're seeing. Again, note it's only updating one graph, so we can go to Report Connections and link it to all pivot tables. We can filter on years as well if we want, as well as individual days. And again, right-clicking Size and Properties and just prevent it from resizing. We can also add some more text-based information on our dashboard. If we create a little chart here with the months. Then we're going to show our forecast costs, our actual costs, and then the variance, which will be the difference between the two. can see here that resizing the columns is not altering any of our chart positions because of the settings we applied earlier. So let's go back to our pivot tables and get some data we can link to those fields. We'll create a new table. Now the variance isn't actually a field readily available to be used, so we're going to add it as a calculated field. To do this, we'll go to Pivot Table Analyze and select Calculated Field. We'll give it a name. and enter the information for the formula. So in this example, I'm looking for the total forecast costs. And then enter minus, and I'll look for the total cost actual. And we've got our variance here. This will now appear in the field list if we wanted to use it on any other pivot table on this report. So to link the information on our dashboard back to that pivot table, we would enter in equals in the cell, go to our pivot table, highlight the cell and press enter. Again, equals, go to our pivot table, select the cell we're going to link it to and press enter. And again with the variance. You can see in the formula bar that it's linked to that pivot table. And I can repeat that process for the other months for the forecast, actuals and the variance. Whenever we add new data to our dashboard, we want to make sure that our filters are linked to it. So we'll check that in Report Connections and would repeat that for both slices in the timeline. But here we can see if we filter on the contract, we have some reference errors. And this is because there is no data for that month. We could get around that by changing the formula quickly. If we do if error at the start, open a bracket, and at the end, do comma zero and close our brackets. That just means if it does error, it'll return a zero instead and repeat for the other cells. So now I have some data on our dashboard that's gonna update with the changes we make on our slices and not show any errors. To make this look a bit better, we can apply a style to it. And we can format the cells 
and set the values to appear as currency. So in this example I want to have a more visual notification if my variance is a negative so I can apply some conditional formatting, highlight the cells that are less than zero and fill them with red. And I can apply a second set of conditional formatting for the highlighted cells that are greater than zero and I'll have those green. And just to finish off the report, we can go to Page Layout and we can hide the grid lines and the headings. If we wanted to refresh the data on our dashboard with up-to-date data from Construct, we could select Data and Refresh All. This presentation is focused on the more commonly used features in Excel and has demonstrated how you can quickly create your own reports. However, you can use the entire suite of Excel tools to create your own bespoke reports and dashboards. Additional information can be found in our online knowledge base.